Hey everyone, Chris Dennison from Dirt Rider here. I'm joined by Ricky Yorks and some dude in a construction helmet. Might be Chris Kiefer under there. It's me. So we're talking about the 2013 450 MX shootout. Right now, the Yamaha YZ450F. And uh, Kiefer, you seem a little cautious. I don't know why I'm sensing that, but why don't you tell us your overall impression of the bike? You never know when you're gonna swap out, and so safety first, gotta have the lid on to talk about the Yamaha. OSHA would be proud. I like where your head's at. Safety first. Okay. Well, Ricky's gonna laugh at you every time he looks at you, so I'm just gonna start with him. <laughs> Tell me about the Yamaha, Ricky. We, uh, we'll start with the handling. I think, personally, from reading the notes, from feeling what I feel about the bike, it does certain things well on the track, and then certain things not so well. And those things switch based on what track you're at, meaning that it's not entirely predictable or consistent. You kind of get different performance out of the bike based on where you're riding it. So, what do you think? Maybe I'm the odd one out, but I, I truly liked it every track. Like, uh, just hopping on it, the suspension for me was was good all the way through. Um, maybe because I've owned a Yamaha recently, so maybe that's why I felt at home at it. But uh, the motor is strong. Just the whole package I got on it and felt instantly comfortable. So you race it right away, stock I'd form. race it right off the show. What do you think, Kiefer? I have a problem with it. You know, it's uh, we all know the Yamaha's wrap. It's like, you know, the 2013 uh, 450 yearbook. It's the one with the worst reputation. Mm -hmm. Well, don't let it fool you. It's not as bad as everyone talks about. It's It has some hiccups. I think uh, it doesn't actually perform that well on the track. It's uh, It doesn't do the exact same thing every lap, so I think predictability is the worst part about it. it it's not predictable. Um, the motor is actually pretty good down low to mid. I really like the motor. Maybe it lights up too fast for me. Maybe it needs to be more of a little more smoother transition to try to build up to the top end because it signs off a little bit on top. Um, so I think the motor could use uh, some mapping changes to make it you know, a little less whiskey throttle-ish. I like this, you know, that's why I got that, you know? So, um, Suspension-wise, I think overall, out of all the bikes, um, the Yamaha has the best suspension. It's the most plush feeling, and don't be scared of that word because plush is equals comfort. You know, exactly. That's, that's it, what I wrote on my notes. Yeah, it's just Very comfortable it's really ride. comfortable. It, you feel it moves a lot in the stroke, but it never really bottoms. You know, it it soaks up a lot of stuff. So I like the suspension a lot, and the bike itself it just needs a little bit more work. Mm -hmm. And one thing on the handling side, the Yamaha's got this weird perception where people think that if you push it, you crash on it, just because that's what they saw Stewart do. Yeah. Personally, maybe I'm not fast enough, but I didn't feel that at all. I felt like I could ride this bike at race pace, and it was pretty good. You know, as far as the predictability, the handling, a lot of that for me has to do with the width. I mean, it's got, uh, it's got the reverse weird slant motor, so it's sucking air through the front, and it's just got a really big, wide radiator. Did that bug you, Ricky, when you are riding the thing? Um, you know, looking at it on the stand, you know, it looks pretty wide and kind of funny looking, but when I hop on the bike, I, I didn't really notice it. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's used to that by now. It's yeah. been two years in the in three, years. three years, you know, so we're all kind of used to it. And now you look at the, the 09 bike, you're like, oh, that's a dinosaur, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, you see yeah they're, they're used to the width, for sure, but I think the vacuum cleaner sound of the intake trips everybody up. We had a lot of comments in the notes People who don't like that, uh, just a sucking sound. Yeah. To me, it's like it, you, you kind of ends up, you're used to it after a while. You know, yeah, I think uh, you're on another bike and the first time you hop on a Yamaha, it's shocking. You want to wear earplugs, but mm -hmm. you get used to it. You know, I think it's not too bad for my taste. And tell us about the cornering of the bike, too, because you spend a lot of time on the Yamaha. You've made it work on flat corners, tight rods, hard pack tracks. I mean, where does it shine for you and where does it maybe lack a little bit? I think it lacks a little front-end traction. I think it's a little light feeling in the front. Um, it's it's middle of the road, you know, it's not the worst, ha you know, I think the Kawasaki was the worst cornering bike. I think the Yamaha corners pretty well. It's just, I could use a little bit more front-end traction in it. Um, flat corner, it's really good, tracks really well. Um, and even if you have like a long sweeper with some rollers in it, I think it could use a little work on that because it kind of wallows in the shock a little bit. I think. It, as you're turning and going through a section, it kind of wants to go a little side to side too much. So if it's a tight rut, it's really good. Flat corners are good, but I think it'd use a little bit more work on some like long sweeper types. Mm -hmm. And Ricky, we had one of our test riders, Mike Barrett. He's, you know, the vet rider, yep. novice rider, a little bit bigger, and uh, he thought the bike worked 
the best on rough tracks. Like at Glen Helen, he just loved the thing. So I, I agreed with him. And how do you think it performs for the average guy on, on like a rough weekend warrior race track if a dude was riding it just on the local circuit? I think the big part of that, what Kiefer touched on, is the suspension is very comfortable. Like the initial travel is so plush and smooth that it makes the little choppy, you know, stuff feel almost like it's not there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, on a rough track, it and, and a, in a world that. where everybody's going to sh towards Showa stuff, I mean, that says something, you know, the yeah. Tiaba stuff on the Yaman is really good. Exactly. Yeah, so. it's a good overall setting. And, you know, we had few nitpicks about the bike from like a fit and finish, just overall perspective. I think one thing the guy said is kind of difficult to start all the way throughout the shootout. Just it's not a one kick bike. It's kind of got a procedure. You got to get top dead center, big smooth stro stroke to get the thing started. But also brakes decent, clutch decent, you know, key for any other little uh, criticisms. I think the the overall length of the bike uh, feels short, you know. So when you you, you give it gas and you and you, you, know, you get on it, it kind of wants to move side to side. Like it lights it up really quick. Um, that's what I noticed. That's the feeling of it. I think the dimensions of it is probably close to the same to every other bike, but that's just the feeling that I get. Um, I I kind of like the look of the bike. It's futuristic. It looks cool. Um, it's different, you know. Yamaha tried something different. Went outside the box, you know, so to speak. I know other manufacturers in the past had a reverse engine but this is actually the one that actually works the best as far as previous you know models that have done that so I think kudos to Yamaha I think a little bit more time testing development they're gonna get it right you know like any other thing two three years down the road you know it's gonna get improved and now everyone's gonna want a Yamaha so it, yeah it, it'll it'll come up yeah it's a solid machine for me I don't think that just off the showroom floor performance is as great as like a the Kawasaki is or the Honda you know I think depending on what track we're riding it kind of switches in my overall ranking kind of up there with the Suzuki the KTM just depending on how rough it is what what the track is but Ricky I mean where do you think it works how does it rank just stack up for you um, for me it, it switched with the Suzuki um, the Suzuki you know had a little some stuff that it did better like cornering and, and uh, you know had a little bit more hit down low but on the rough track, I, I picked the Yamaha over the Suzuki, so they swapped positions at two different tracks. We go to smoother track and we go to rougher track. The rougher track, I prefer the Yamaha. But also, we haven't touched on this, is I thought that the reliability on the Yamaha was one of the better bikes. You know, between the Honda and the Yamaha, I think you could ride those things all year and get away with just basic, basic routine maintenance. Yeah, I, I would know. I mean, I've been around the, <laughs> the brand for a little while, and. You change the oil and filter, and you ride it, and then check the valves, and you shoot. The valves are always intolerant, yes. you know, and you ride it. And I know we've had a long-term durability, you know, bike, and it was over 100 hours, and it looked great. Everything mm -hmm. was inspired. And and also too, what he was saying, I think, like I said, going back to the perception of it, I think it's great for 95, 96 percent of all the people that ride their bike. Yeah. That three, four percent that ride really high levels want stuff that the average guy doesn't need. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I think we can all agree that, you know, the unique setup of the motor, the pipe coming out the back and everything, that's in no way a disadvantage. Like, it's it's a good overall design. It's totally competitive with everything else. It's just preference. So last question. When you wear goggles with that helmet, where does the strap go, dude? I can't figure it out. It's Velcro. Remember the old school stuff when they had quick oh, straps? Oh, it's a quick strap. Yeah, like I always wanted one for Christmas, like when I was like seven. Yeah. And I never got them, so... I ordered some, ordered some from the hard hat, so I'm going to run it, maybe with the track. So if you see a guy in a yellow helmet, uh, quick strap, going to buy you. You know what's up. <laughs> like your style. That'll go good with your cow print LBZ baggies. Going back. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's it for the Yamaha. Good opinion of the bike. You guys can stay tuned to Dirt Rider Magazine, see the full shootout. And uh, be sure to catch our other videos. We're talking about all the brands. But this is the only video Kiefer's wearing the hard hat in, so it's kind of something special. Enjoy.